Today, I want to show you a quick walkthrough of how to create a homepage, a landing page style homepage using some tips and tricks that you may have not known about before. Hello, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes and I'm doing another one of these website from scratch tutorials because the last one was very, very popular and people asked for more. And also I got a great suggestion of uh, someone sent in this here, this landing page right here, neilpatel.com um, to ask us to replicate it. Like how do you build a page like this? So and Neil Patel is Thrive Leads user, by the way, and he obviously also a legendary marketer. And so this is a really cool page to look at, you know, how was this built? So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to I'm going to go into how to build something like this. And instead of going into a lot of detail, like in the last video, I went into a lot of like fine details here. I want to go through this a bit more quickly and show you along the way, maybe some hacks, maybe some workarounds that might be new to you. So to get started, I'm opening a page here in Thrive Content Builder and I go to choose landing page. And we're going to start with our blank uh, the full width blank page, which I'm going to open here from the Thrive template cloud and then we'll get started. Now, the first thing I will do here is basically look at what kind of, you know, how is this page divided? And what I'm seeing here is four sections. We have this top section, then a white section, orange section, and a footer. So that's the first thing I'm going to go after. I'll inspect this element to get the shade of gray being used here and then we can get started. So I'll get rid of this, I'll get rid of this. I'll basically put a paragraph in here, get rid of this, and just have my sections first. So top, then white, then orange, then footer, right? So top section, background color, we'll get the one, we'll insert the one I just got there, okay. Uh, then we have a white section right here, and let's, Go like this and we will save this as a favorite color as well. Then we've got orange, we've got this specific tone of orange here. Let's see if I can get that. Here we go, background, this color. And I'm gonna save that, that would be the next two sections. I'm gonna save that as a favorite color as well. Make it easier, so save as favorite to make it easier to, to grab it again, because clearly a lot of elements are using this color. So there we go. And then the next step would again be basically to get the font. So uh, we can get a font that, we can try and find out what exactly this font is, or we can just you know get something that's similar. Because I went through that in the previous video, I'm not gonna go through that, so we'll just skip ahead to the next bit. But just as a reminder, what I'll basically do is I'll go to Thrive Landing Pages, landing page settings and in landing page fonts, this is where I will play around with the font options until I have something that looks you know, similar or exactly the same depending on what I'm going for. All right, so this is what I ended up with after a bit of playing around, uh, it's close enough. And again, you know, I'm not really going after an exact copy here what we need next is a side-by-side -side type layout. So we'll get columns, just go in with a half and a half column right here. And I'll put my text in here, this is my heading. And then over here, I want the image. And I've already uploaded the images I need here. So there we go, image of Neil, there we go. So, uh, and then right away, the alignment here is, is clearly important, right? We have this layered effect kind of. So we want to do the same here, which means that on the image, I'll go to margins and remove any bottom margin or padding. And then on the columns, the same thing, because by default, everything will have some margin and some padding when you add it to the page. So that stuff doesn't, you know, get all scrunched together by default, right? By default, it should look good. Um, but for something like this, if you want something to sit perfectly on a border, then that means you have to remove some of those margins. So right now what we have is, I mean, you actually can't see it that well, 
But if I make this gray here, maybe slightly darker, I think it becomes clearer, right? We have this effect here where the image and the bottom border are nicely aligned. That's how we do that. Next, we have a logo and some text here. Oops. Okay, go like this. The logo is actually an image. So I'll just drop in an image with the logo. Let me see, I have two of these, one of them. Not sure why I have two of these. Ah, this is the smaller one. Okay, here we go. So, and I think it's a bit smaller than that too. Then we have some text, paragraph, I'll just paste. And, and so again, here, what we can do, I'll just eyeball it, right? It's just like, okay, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit larger than this. So let's just do like, like this. And then some of the words are bolded. Can't remember which ones, perhaps like this, right? And then, okay, here we have a line. And this is where we get to a point where, okay, Unfortunately, in Content Builder, there's no way to just add a little line like that. We have dividers, but they go all across. Um, so, and it's not really very customizable. That's something we want to improve. So, you know, in a future version, we'll definitely have more of an option where you can just put a line on the page. Why not? But for now, what's the workaround? Well, just use an image, right? So I just made an image of a line. Just add that. And really for something like a line, it's not a big deal either because obviously it's not ideal. I'm gonna add a bit of spacing here. It's not ideal for this to be an image, but the image is so tiny, it almost doesn't matter either. So it's, you know, it's not really something you need to worry about. Um, so that's a decent workaround. All right, what else we got? Uh, okay, we've got this line of text here. Let's see. And I can't properly select this stuff because the image like sits too close to it, but there you go. Um, so this is another line of text. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and here what we do is select this bit and I'm guessing we apply the same shade of orange here like this. Uh, and it's perhaps also a bit bigger, but I'm not gonna do too much tweaking. Then we have a button which we can't make an exact button like this, unfortunately. Um, again, you know, more button options will be added. But for now, what we can do is, you know, basically what I do is, first of all, I know that this is full width button, right? It goes all the way across. And then I'd go through the styles here to see this one is more like it. And then I would twist it to orange. It's not the same orange we want. So then I can make adjustments, right? I can use this shade of orange. And what do we have for the text? It's some other text, obviously. It's like, yes, Neil, I want the thing. Um, like that, something like that. And then we can also, what I can also do is I can use the same font here, although it's too thin. So maybe I'll clear that again, looked better before. Uh, it's too big now though. But here, basically what I'm trying to show you is I mean, in most cases, and this is also a point that was brought up last time, is like, okay, when we do a tutorial like this showing you how to replicate a landing page, I mean, the point isn't that you go and copy and, you know, make an exact copy of someone else's landing page. I mean, that's, what's the point, right? You have to be unique in some way. Um, the point of these tutorials is to show you what's possible, but also like somewhat, you know, I've got a lot of experience with Content Builder, obviously, and maybe it's useful for you to see what my approach is because, as you can see, it's a lot of just like tweaking, right? I don't know instantly what the font size is or whatever, but I just play around with this stuff. Like here, I can tell that the button is, is basically less tall on this other page. So, you know, if that's something I really like, oops, that was a typo. Uh, then I can play around with the margins here and then, or the padding inside the button rather, and then add a margin to the top get the spacing to look a bit nicer here. It also changed the spacing. But a lot of, you know, creating designs, I probably also move the whole thing down a little maybe like this. A lot of it is just, you know, tweaking. Um, basically, it's almost never just on the first try. It looks amazing, right? There's always this tweaking going on. And I hope that's useful for you to see someone do that. Give you some ideas of what you can do yourself. Anyway, we've got the top section done here. Then we have this I actually really like, just in terms of, of design, the here is what 
I'm going to show you. So let me put that on the page. So if we have these two things, we have here is what very small in all caps and then this much larger. Um, I think that's just a really nice little design choice. So this, I would make it even smaller and perhaps choose a kind of a gray tone for it and maybe make it bold like this. And then this is quite big. So this might be like 50 or so. And that looks quite nice. And then I want to move these two together because they're too far apart. So it's more like this. Then I think we have another line, use the same line again, right? Um, and then I want to show you another little hack that we have. So I'll get this line, oh, it's a bit tricky to get. Central line it, there we go. But as you can see, and then also I'd move this down by quite a lot because this is something that is often missed, like the, the use of white space, just empty space can make a big difference to what a page looks like. And here, actually I'd add even more of a top margin. Here we go. Then we have something interesting. Here this is, I wanna show you two little hacks to do what we see here. We have, well, we have a four column layout with a repeating kind of thing. So we have we're basically the same thing in every, in every column. So we put our columns in here and then what we can do is we can create, you know, we can just use this as an image. But what I, what I saw when I downloaded these icons is that actually it's only the icon that's an image. This doesn't really make a big difference, but there's actually a way to do this that you might not be aware of. So what I can do is I'll get a box. I will get a content box. I'll get box number six because that's nice and customizable get this box, I will get rid of the text inside the box. Instead, I will put this little image, my icon here, one of these in the box, and I'll center align it. And then I will edit the box colors. So background is basically, well, we can make it white or we can make it transparent. And the border of the box is some shade of gray. So some light gray, maybe like this. But now, okay, now you're thinking, well, it's a box and not a, not a circle like, like we have here. We want a circle, right? Another thing I'm gonna do, let's see. I think that's still too dark. Anyway, what we can do is we can put this in a content container like this. We can change the width of the content container. Basically, I want it to be square. So let's find out how tall this is. By hitting F12 and inspecting it like this. So it is 93 pixels tall, I believe. Okay. So let's change the width of the content container to 93 pixels. See if that works. Sure, is that square? Maybe it's square. Anyway, then I take the border radius and I increase it until we have a circle. So a circle on a web page is either an image or it is a box with very round corners. There you go. Now we have this icon in a circle. That's you know just a thing you can do. Like I said, it's not the most useful thing to know how to do, but now you know how to do it. Okay, and then we have we have some text, right? We get this, this is central lined paste. And then we play around with the text. So the line height is a bit bigger. It's much lighter gray, something like that. And maybe also get rid of this to move it. Hmm. Let's see, maybe we have to have a negative margin here like this, okay. And then we do copy paste. So I copy my icon thing and my text into each column. And I change the text and I change the icon. So I click on the icon, change image, do whichever one the next one is, change the text and so on. We'll skip ahead for this bit. 
So here we've got a bunch of icons and columns. I didn't bother to update all of the stuff here because it's more about the layout. What we have next is, well, you know, this looks very fancy. It's just an image. So um, there's nothing, you know, there's no special trick there or anything. It's just a nice looking image on the page like this. But there is a detail that I think is interesting, which is that these columns here with the icons seem to be almost like in a slight semicircle. And really what it is is that the middle two are just lower down than the outer two. And we can do that as well. By going, um, we'll go to the same content container here and we'll just add a top margin of, I don't know what it is, maybe 15 pixels uh, to these two, top margin 15. And then because we have these outlines here, it's not that visible. So I'm gonna save the page and preview it so we can see what that looks like. And see, so here we have a similar effect. Maybe it's a bit too subtle here in my example, but, um, you see what I mean, right? So that's another thing that uh, is, I think, an interesting design choice here on this on this page and something we can easily emulate as well. All right, so going back to the original page, what we have is another call to action at the bottom and a big button at the bottom. So, and here, this is pretty straightforward, right? So what we can do here is, uh, this is the other call to action and it is large and it is white, that's all pretty straightforward. Then what I do is I copy this button here because the new button we need is quite similar. So I put that in here, except that it's white. Um, so what I'd actually do is I would get the preset kinda white color and then make the background totally white like this. And then I can change the um, text color to orange and we don't want it to be full width anymore. So we go default center. And then maybe, again, I can play around with margins and stuff. Uh, probably wanna get rid of this top margin here or make it smaller. Uh, maybe make the button a bit wider like this. This kind of thing, right? There we have a similar looking thing. So again, we can't make this exact button and we do want to add more button options in the future. Finally, then down here, well, here we have two things basically. I've got a logo with some text and then a menu. And both of these things we can do. Here's what I would do. I would do a half and half layout, so column layout. Over here, we want an image in this column, which is the other logo. The, so this is the logo again, but in white. It's smaller than this. And I want to have that left aligned. And as you can see, the text here now wraps around this. And so here we have some disclaimer thing. Make that white. And then change, uh, I want to change this to be better aligned, right? Mm, almost with this. Uh, there we go. That's pretty good. So that's how I make this thing, oh, you know, minus this little border here, but it's close enough, right? And then over here, we want to have a menu. So we get uh, in widgets, have a custom menu that we can put in here. And so we select that. We want this to be right aligned. We want this to be white. And then again, it's a question of basically, um, playing around with the margins to get this aligned, which I have to admit, you know, isn't the most elegant solution here um, to get this aligned, get these aligned with each other basically. So now here we have our menu items. Then one final touch is that we have a divider here that goes across the whole thing. The way I would do this is I would choose the, the footer here and um, I would add a border, so a solid, one pixel border, then get the color and, you know, choose whatever, some kind of a light, oops, that's the wrong one. I wanted border color, here we go. Some kind of a lighter version of this, right? Basically something like that, it looks a bit ugly, but basically I could maybe also try to get the exact color this is, but 
you get the idea. We can basically apply a border here to get the same kind of effect. Then I would get this whole thing because the footer is too big. Remove the top and bottom margins from this footer section. And then I think we have a reasonably good uh, replica of this page. So there we go. That's our version. Um, I tried to go through this quickly and I hope you got some, some good ideas of how to use Thrive landing pages. And of course, very cool page by Neil Patel. This is, by the way, an upside down homepage style page. And I will link below to a tutorial about upside down homepages as well. So I hope you enjoyed this landing page from scratch video. Let us know if you have any other suggestions or any questions by leaving a comment below.